प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पेर हो आमारी एह नजर समी पेर हो आमारी एह कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the pathmaker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of your devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. You know, there's many, many reasons that are found in the Sastras that state and exemplify that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Supreme Lord of Lords, the Supreme Entity, the Ultimate Entity, the Entity that we want to attain here, not only but after leaving this human body, our soul going to Maharaj's Divine Abode, Akshardham. Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami says in his Vato, Regarding this matter of Bhagwan being supreme, that there are such kinds of people in the world that may be 20, 21, 22 years of age that are coming out of this sansar, meaning out of this world to become saints. This is Bhagwan Swaminarayan's supremacy that we can understand here. From this, we want to listen to a charitra today regarding one very, very unique devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan that took a leap of faith at such a young age. And we want to see what that individual was doing or was about to do before taking this leap of faith towards the path of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, towards the path of God. The title of this charitra is called the Elite 18 plus 1. Swami Narayan Hare. A very important aspect of bhakti involves the commandments, commands of the Lord's implicity. The unquestioning obedience Bhagwan Swami Narayan won from his followers was phenomenal. You know, Bhagwan Swami Narayan only stayed on this earth for a mere 49 years. And he entered the Sampradaya, establishing its great fame at the age of 21, we can say. From 21 years of age until the age of 49, Bhagwan Swami Narayan did works that will last thousands of years in the future. So proving that his supremacy is there. But one unique perspective that Bhagwan Swami Narayan achieved on this earth was making the most vile into devotees. Making those who had the most firm, you can say, cruel natures, very, very odd natures, into very, very obedient-natured people, individual followers, we can say. How did Bhagwan do this? Well, we can only say his divine persona, his divine personality, his charm. But more so, the thing to very, the thing to look at or the thing to examine is that he did it in such a way 
which was non-violent, without any kind of force, and very easy to understand for all kinds of people. May it be of the lower caste, may it be of the higher caste, may it be of the middle class. It didn't matter. Bhagwan Swaminarayan had his ways and has his ways even till this moment, till today. That is very unique and very subtle. In the past avatars, devotees were made through different other techniques. But no technique matches Bhagwan Swaminarayan's technique because Bhagwan Swaminarayan did it his way. Bhagwan Swaminarayan did it through his vision. Bhagwan Swaminarayan did not look at any other individual or entity, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan brought all his charm, his unique persona, his unique personality from his divine abode Akshardham. There is a charitra regarding this that we would like to listen to today. Once Bhagwan Swaminarayan wrote a letter to his 18 disciples. Bhagwan Swaminarayan had many, many disciples, but he specifically filtered out, you can say, 18 disciples that he wanted to write a letter to. Here's what the letter stated. O great dwells of satsang, and then now the names of these 18 individuals, Mulubai of Bandhya, Macha Kachar of Karyani, Aliya Kachar of Jinjavadar, Sura Kachar of Loya, Somla Kachar of Botad, Hathiya Patgir, Mamiya Patgir, Amra Patgir of Kundar, Matra Dhadal of Sarangpur, Naja Jogya, Aja Patel, Kala Patel, Veera Patel, Vera Bhai, Jivraj Bhai and Kamalsi Bhai of Methan, Dosa Bhai and Lada Shet of Bandhya and the others. Bhagwan Swaminarayan named, stated 18 individuals with the villages and then Bhagwan Swaminarayan put and others. He did not put specifically who, but this is a very, very important part of this charitra. That's why I'm pointing it out. Now, to understand and fathom how obedient these followers, not only these 18 stated, but overall in the Swaminarayan Sampradaya during the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan were is remarkable. Unmatched even till this day to day. How so? Well, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, all he is doing is just stating these names. There is no kind of persuasion. There is no kind of force. There is no kind of, you can say, a, a bribing of money. There is no kind of politics that is played. But just sheer obedience, something that is very rare in religion, something that is very, very unique in religion, something that is very, very needed in religion in order for it to function in a very, very smooth manner. After saying these names, Bhagwan says, Jay Swaminarayan, I am writing this letter to ask all of you to renounce your families and livelihoods. Proceed to Jetalpur. There, Bhai Ramda Swami will initiate you into the sadhu fold. Then proceed on a pilgrimage to Kashi and then return for my darshan in Kutch. Remember, leave whatever you are doing once you read this letter. Do not go anywhere. Follow my agna and proceed to Jetalpur. Sri Hari sent a messenger from village to village with this letter. That's all Bhagwan Swaminarayan stated. Very short, precise, to the point, yet very effective. Jay Swaminarayan, I'm writing this letter to ask all of you, just, it says ask, all of you to renounce your families and livelihoods. Now, first and foremost, Bhagwan has not stated this in person. He is writing a letter. Second, just from a mere letter, this statement is so difficult to, to follow. Who would do it? That's the question. Yet, it says over here, 
I'm writing this letter to ask all of you to renounce your families and livelihoods. Just by a mere letter, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's devotees were ready to renounce their families even if they had a son, a daughter, a wife, parents to take care of, or livelihood, property, homes, cows, horses, etc., so on and so forth, wealth. Yet, upon Bhagwan Swaminarayan's word, this statement, so this one letter, a piece of paper, just stating this and then Bhagwan Swaminarayan's signature at the bottom, devotees were ready to forsake everything. This is the uniqueness of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. If we put ourselves in the, such a situation, can we do this? If not so this very, you can say, fact, can we follow the commands of Puja Guruji as is? If Puja Guruji says to do 100 Mara every day for one year, is it possible for us to do it without missing a day? If Guruji asks us that a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan cannot eat outside food, so you must forsake it now onwards for life, are we capable of following this command? If Santos say that, Bhagat, you'll have to read the Vachnamrut every day in order for you to spiritually progress and also listen to live Katha for half an hour. Can we do this? These are the small basic agnas and commandments that a simple devotee has in its, and his or her foundation. If this cannot be followed, then such kinds of commands as renouncing one's family and livelihood, how can that be followed? But this statement is strictly not for us. If it was, then our name would also be there. But for sure we can understand and say that Bhagwan Swaminarayan wants us to at least follow the basics of his Shikshapatri, the basics of his principles in order for us in order for us to go to Akshardham. Bhagwan wants us to develop Agna and Upasna. Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami says in his Vato that Agna and Upasna are the two wings to go to Akshardham. Without a wing, how can an eagle fly? Similarly, Bhagwan just stated such a small statement, yet let's see how these 18 devotees react. Remember, leave whatever you're doing once you read this letter. Bhagwan even states this. Do not go anywhere, follow my Agna and proceed to Jetalpur. Shriri sent a messenger from village to village with this letter. All of the devotees listed in the letter were ranked eminently in society. Gati chiefs, landlords, and great businessmen. The 18 names that I read to you, these are not normal, low, class, low caste, or medium caste people. These are individuals who are chiefs of villages like Sudakachar, landlords and great businessmen like the Shades. Yet, Bhagwan Swaminarayan had no kind of doubt. Bhagwan Swaminarayan wrote without a doubt. Bhagwan Swaminarayan had trust in his devotees that when this letter is sent to this devotee, this is what will happen. One thing that we need to understand as devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and as disciples of Puja Guruji is that there should be no doubt in our mind when there is a command put out by our Maharaj through the Shikshapatri or our Satpurush. If our Satpurush, our Puja Guruji, has trust in us enough so that he is able to tell us everything and anything regarding our nature, regarding our issues, 
regarding doing this and not doing that, then it's something that should be we should be proud of if that kind of trust is you can say instilled in us by our Satpurush. But if we have not developed the trust of a Satpurush, then we're not quite there yet. And Akshardham might not be guaranteed. Therefore, the very essence of satsang, we can say, is after attaining satsang, attaining the association of a satpurush, developing affection for a satpurush, is for us to trust the words of a satpurush and, the, and for the satpurush to develop trust in us. Both of these factors are needed in order for atyantik kalyan or moksha to occur. When trust is developed by the Satpurush in us, and how can it be done? What is the procedure for that? Well, the more and more we stay in His commands, the more and more we become obedient to Him, the more and more we develop das bow or servant servitude towards the satpurush and towards santos and bhaktos and the satsang the more and more we develop an emotion of surrendership that's when when all these elements are seen for a long period of time that's when the satpurush develops trust in us Without these factors, without these factors mentioned, it is not possible. The Satpurush does not develop trust upon us by us doing katha or by us writing books or by us managing something or by us just coming to Mandir and calling it a day or by us doing only puja. But these very, very deep, deep you can say fundamental elements are needed in, for, in order for that trust to develop. And when that trust is developed, then our moksha is guaranteed. When that trust is developed, then we slowly but surely are walking on the path of God in a very, very steady fashion. That's why it's very important. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan here is showing to us that just like I have trust in these devotees by writing such a bold letter, by writing such a state, such statements which are very, very tough to follow. But one Swaminarayan is showing to us that I need you to behave in such a manner that such kind of trust that I have for these 18 devotees and others can be developed also inside of you. We need to gain Bhagwan's trust, just like how in the world a father and a son relationship, if the son messes up a couple times, the trust of the father might waver a little inside of the son. But if the son behaves properly for a long period of time, slowly but surely, the father's trust will again be, you can say, enabled on the son. In the same way, our Bhagwan, our Guruji is kind of like a father-son relationship. And such kind of a trust needs to be developed in order for the relationship to successfully and steadily, you can say, progress. All the devotees listed in the letter were ranked eminently in society. Kati chiefs, landlords, and great businessmen. When Aja Patel of Methan got the letter, he immediately announced his departure because Aja Patel was a very, very firm devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. He was a very, very, you can say, obedient devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and he wanted to follow the commands of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. According to the Vachnamrud, Gurdada, 1st chapter 15th, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that those who have bhakti inside of their hearts want to follow the commands of God and His Son. Those who have bhakti inside of one's heart 
want to follow the commands of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his son. This is Bhagwan Swaminarayan's own statement st stated in Gadada, first chapter, fifteenth vachanamru, in the beginning. At the moment, he was in the middle of his nephew Kalyandas's wedding. What an event! Think about it. A nephew's wedding, you're inside of the wedding, the wedding is occurring, it's going on, and you receive the letter from the messenger. And he decides to announce his departure immediately. Think about how much firm faith Aja Patel must have. Kalyandas asked to see the letter. Because obviously Kalyandas was like, it's my wedding, what's going on, why are you leaving? Let me see. Expecting resistance from Kalyandas, Ajabe started to explain the importance of Maharaj's Agna and that it would not be wise to interfere. Kalyandas silently read the letter and proclaimed, Uncle, I must come too. Kalyandas, might I add, is in the middle of his wedding. According to, according to Indian tradition, there's four rounds that are made around the Yagna Kund, which completes a wedding ceremony. And Kalyandas had almost made his rounds, three of them, and this letter came and he stopped and he read this letter. And upon reading this letter, he said, I must come too. He was 75% married, only 25% was remaining, yet, Upon reading Bhagwan's divine words, think about how much Bhagwan's words have an effect from even a letter, not directly heard through the ears. That proves that Bhagwan Swaminarayan was not only God, but he was the supreme God of gods. Maharaj had ordered me to leave my home as well. Ajape was surprised by Kalyandas's response. He snatched the letter and carefully reread it. There was only 18 names and his nephews was not amongst them. So he asked, where do you see your name? Kalyandas replied, uncle, do you not see the end of the end of the letter? It says, and others. Remember, and others. And I am that other. Ajabe was speechless. He thought that my nephew in the middle of a wedding and and he read the letter in such a way that i could not even think of he read the letter outside of the box even 18 names were stated but he picked up on and others and he accepted it to be his own name ajabe insisted that kalyandas seek approval from his mother and his in-laws and his wife. Kalyandas received permission from all three of them right there on the spot. Another very, very tough decision, yet think about it. Obviously, Kalyandas needed approval. He cannot just run away like that. It just doesn't work like that in the world. But he seeked approval from his mother, his in-laws, and his wife-to-be to go to renounce the world. And surprisingly, you're probably wondering that how could these three individuals give consent so easily to such a big irrational decision? Well, the only, you can say, solution or the only answer to this question is that Bhagwan Swaminarayan resides in each and every individual and Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself being inside of the soul of those individuals said yes and gave the approval. There is no way that in the middle of a wedding ceremony, especially the wife to be, gave permission to his, her future, her future husband-to-be permission to become a saint in the middle of a wedding ceremony. Yet it happened. 
this is a true story. These are true events. It happened and it happened in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's religion. It happened in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's, you can say, garden. Kalyandas received permission from all three of them right there on the spot. As the wedding drums beat to the, to the rhythm of the sacrifice and flutes hummed to the tune of the detachment, both uncle and nephew left for Jetalpur together. In Jetalpur, Bhai Ramda Swami initiated the devotees and told them to go to Kutch to receive Maharaj's blessings. Sriji Maharaj waited for the saints on the city's main street. Bhagwan himself waited for his saints to come. This is how much love Bhagwan Swaminarayan had. And you know, Bhagwan Swaminarayan did three things specifically. When he met his saints who were traveling in Long Vichran around or touring the region, when they came to meet him, number one, Bhagwan Swaminarayan would greet them. He would hug them and he would serve them. These were Bhagwan Swaminarayan's three niyams, three vows that he always did upon seeing his saints. That's how much love Bhagwan Swaminarayan had and has for his saints as of now. As soon as the 18, or as soon as the 19 saints were in sight, Sri Jamarad started doing dunvats. Bhagwan himself, the humility, the humbleness, the daspanu. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is showing that his saints were not ordinary and he himself was not ordinary. How so? Well, on one side, he is the supreme Lord of Lords. No other incarnation, no other avatar, no other God ever has shown such a feat where he bows down to his saints by doing dunvats, prostration. And on the other side, these saints who have renounced the world for their God, Sriji Maharaj, has renounced money and wealth and family and fortune and businesses and land and, and <clears throat> great, great, you can say, mansions just to stay in the command of their God. Where can you find such kind of saints and where can you find such kind of a God? This is why the Swaminarayan Sampraday, this is why the Swaminarayan religion is unique from all other religions. Such kind of events happening and normally on a natural basis. This is not a reenactment. This is not an act. This is not a play or a drama. These are natural events that happened and were written down for the, you can say, you can say <clears throat> for the motivation of the devotees of the future. They all rushed to stop him. Sri Jamaraj embraced all 19 sadhus. When Kalyandas approached Maharaj, the others narrated his story. Sri Jamaraj obviously knew this, so Sri Jamaraj uttered words of exclamation, Adbut, 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 meaning wondrous, wondrous and wondrous, and fittingly named him Adbutanan Swami. Maharaj spoke to his why did he name him Adbhutanand Swami? Because he did such a wondrous act by being in the middle of his wedding ceremony and reading the letter written by Bhagwan Swami Narayan and letting go of his relations, his ties, his, his money, his wealth, his property and going to stay with Bhagwan Swami Narayan and surrender his life to him. That's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan named him Adbhutanan Swami, or you can say a wondrous saint. Maharaj spoke to the sadhus with love and admiration in his tone. You have followed my Agna without a second's delay. This is no small achievement. Your names will be praised forever. Pleased with the whole group, he kept them with him for a few days and then commanded them to return home to resume a normal life. Except for Adbhutanan Swami. 
Bhagwan Swami Narayan tested his devotees and all the 18 names that he stated were commanded to go back home. And that 19th saint, Adbhutanand Swami, was commanded to stay. We can see that this was all set up by Bhagwan Swami Narayan as a charitra for the future devotees and bhaktos so that we can understand that following the commands of Bhagwan Swami Narayan pleases Bhagwan and his Satpurush very much. And Adbhutanand Swami stayed and Adbhutanand Swami did wondrous acts throughout his life, stayed in the command of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and returned back to Akshardham where he came from. This was the life of Sadguru Adbhutanand Swami that we understood. And might I add that here in Puja Guruji's, you can say, life here on this earth, such kind of saints renounce their life for him. Such kind of saints in the world from different various countries, such kind of saints in the world that have unique, unique, you can say job titles, have very high pay grade, yet they, re, they, they renounce to please and stay in the commands of Puja Guruji. This is the supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This has been the supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and this will be the supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And this was the spiritual level of the household devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. They were ever ready to follow in the commands of Maharaj. And all we can learn if we do not understand anything from this charitra is that Bhagwan Swami Narayan, number one, very much likes those who stay in his commands. And number two, there is only happiness in staying in the commands of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Satpurush. And finally, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is supreme. He is the Sarvopari. He is Almighty God through these kinds of charitras. Saying this, my humble Jai